This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Uh, today's Top 5 Tuesday list is a little bit of a trip down memory lane, and it's sort of a preface to um, a guitar that we're going to be looking at on Thursday, which is, let's say, not a very good example of the breed. Um, in fact, it's a bit of a dog, if I'm honest, but it is typical of the kind of uh, affordable entry-level guitars that were av available back in the 70s and 80s. So, um, tell you what, let's go and take a look at some other guitars from that period, entry-level guitars from the 70s and 80s, guitars that you'd really probably rather forget. But I'm here to remind you of them, starting with... Epiphone by Gibson, Strat copy. Yes, the Epiphone by Gibson Strat. Uh, these things came out in about 1987 or 88, and they cost about 200 quid. And um, the main selling point for me when I first saw one of these was, I'd grown up throughout the 70s, you know, drooling, positively salivating over Gibson and Fender catalogues. And here was a guitar that had the word Gibson on it. It is actually branded Epiphone by Gibson. Um, it had a Gibson logo on it, and I could afford it. And then you play one, and then you realise, okay, yeah, um, perhaps not. Um, they probably came in a whole different range of colours, but I only seem to remember them in this kind of bright Fiesta red colour. Um, so what can we say about them? Well, I first started teaching in 91, and that was before the revolution, frankly, that was the, uh, the, the Yamaha Pacifica 112. That was a game changer for affordable guitars, but that was still in the future. So there were still uh, plenty of these things knocking around, and some of my students would actually turn up with them. And I remember one lad uh, turning up for a guitar lesson who had one of these, and it can't have been more than, say, two or three years old, this guitar. And the plywood body was starting to delaminate. It was starting to split. Couple that with, you know, high action, poor tuning stability, sharp fret ends, pickups that sounded both muddy and raspy at the same time. And you have a true dog of a guitar that is best forgotten. The other thing as well I would point out about this is that these guitars were produced under the Henry J. stewardship of Gibson. Um, so there was um, Gibson under Henry Juskovitz. Um, copying another company's design. Yeah, I'll, I'll just leave the second part of that unsaid. You know what I'm thinking. Uh, so that's the Epiphone by Gibson Strat. Next. Satellite Les Paul copy. Yes, the Satellite Les Paul copy. Um, I uh, This is my second ever electric guitar. We'll be looking at the first one in the next segment. Um, I bought this for about £80, I think it was, in 1980 or 81. Got it out of me uh, mother's mail order catalogue, great universal stores, or little woods, one of those, you know. And paid for it out of me Saturday job money. And the reason I wanted something Les Paul-like was because I had this good friend who was, uh, whose dad was minted, absolutely rich, filthy rich he was. I uh, used to work away in the Gulf, so that meant me mate had a really good guitar. It was a Gibson The Paul and I wanted something that looked like that. And, well, it does look pretty convincing, doesn't it? In a small photograph taken from a distance. But get up close and you start to see the flaws. Um, a plywood body with a bolt-on neck of some indeterminate timber. Um, Graunchy tuning pegs, and poor tuning stability. Basically felt like they were lubricated with gravel. Uh, fret buzz and dead spots all over the neck. And don't be fooled by those uh, humbuckers. They're not humbuckers. They're cheap, nasty ceramic single coils inside fake humbucker covers, which when you have a look uh, from the underneath inside, they're actually old Pepsi cans uh, cut and bent into shape. Uh, but you know what? You, you plug it into the old mustard yellow Coron fuzz box and it makes a healthy adolescent racket and got me into my first band but you know what um, I'd love to say I have fond memories of this guitar but I don't so there you go the satellite Les Paul copy next Woolworths Top 20 yeah the Woolworths Top 20 my first ever electric guitar um, bought this I think in 1979 the local radio station uh, in this part of the world that was called Radio Tees at the time um, 
local independent radio station. They had this phone in show on uh, like the drive time kind of hour, you know, kind of five five pm that sort of time, uh, and it was called Tradio. And it was, I guess, like the, the sort of late 70s equivalent of um, eBay or Gumtree or something like that. You can basically phone up and buy and sell things, you know. And uh, one young chap was uh, selling an electric guitar for £25. Didn't know what it was called. Uh, didn't know anything about it, but it was uh, he'd had a go at learning to play the guitar. It wasn't for him, and he was selling the guitar for £25. So I was there like a shot. Um, you basically they put you, you you phone in, say I'm interested in such and such, and then the radio station uh, put you to give you know kind of put you in contact with each other. And I paid twenty five quid for it, and it was an electric guitar, and it was mine. It was just such a thrill, you know, plugging into the old um, you know kind of radio cassette turntable music centre kind of thing that, that you used to have in those days. You used to have, I remember you used to have to press play and record on the tape deck and then it would activate the mic socket so you could plug into the mic socket and um, absolutely ruin the cheap nasty speakers that were on this uh, this proto kind of hi-fi system that uh, was in the living room at the time. Um, yeah, but it was just the thrill of having an amplified electric guitar, strumming a chord here and hearing the sound happening over there. Fantastic stuff. Uh, this guitar taught me a lot um, because it would absolutely devour strings. It would just, it was like, a I often describe this guitar as being a collection of sharp edges held together with a guitar shaped lump of plywood. That pretty much sums it up. And it would just kind of eat strings. So, you know. You'd be, I'd be able to go into town on a Saturday to, be, to buy guitar strings and buy, you know, kind of Tuesday I was playing on a guitar with, that had four or five at the most strings left on it. So if I needed a note that was on the top E string for me latest Hank Marvin lick or whatever that I was trying to learn, um, but the top E string wasn't there, I'd have to find it somewhere else. So it kind of taught me, you know, about how to find notes on the neck and, and all that sort of stuff. It was part of my, um, part of my musical education. And it's t it's an exercise I give to my students these days. Actually, is uh, okay. So that lick there. Imagine you you've uh, snapped your top E string. Go and play it somewhere else on the guitar. It's a great exercise. You might want to try it sometime. But it wasn't a great guitar. The Woolworths Top Twenty. Um, definitely a guitar that's uh, best forgotten. But as I say, I'm here to remind you of them. Next, Hondo Rainbow. Okay, the Hondo Rainbow. Um, this was. Um, a guitar that was around in the early 80s, I seem to remember, and uh, essentially a plywood body, bolt-on neck Les Paul copy, available in a range of day-glow colours. Um, the main attraction, for me at least, of one of these guitars is the pickups, because you can see uh, no fake humbuckers hiding under kind of chopped up Pepsi tins on this guitar, you've actually got proper humbuckers and um, they're cream coloured so they look like DiMarzio and that's aspirational, that made this guitar seem upmarket, it's the only thing that did make it seem upmarket, um, all the usual kind of things that you don't want on um, on a beginner's guitar, high action, poor tuning, stability, fretboards etc etc, it was just, that was a given on all of these guitars, you know, I've said that about pretty much all the guitars on this list, but I have fond memories of this because of the Hondo Rainbow, because um, my school's music department back then was run by uh, a chap called Mr Coffee. I wonder if he's uh, still around, if you're watching Mr Coffee, get in touch, um, but yeah, he was um, he was a youngish chap back then, and he was into rock music. So he bought some for the music department. He bought some rock band instruments, a bass guitar, an electric guitar, one of these. And I have fond memories of hanging around in the uh, school music uh, department on a lunchtime, uh, bashing out power chords and probably um, you know bad versions in the wrong key of "Smoke on the Water" on this um, on this thing. But ours was the same. Or the the one that I played was the same colour as this. I seem to remember. And as I say, you know. Not a great guitar by any stretch of the imagination, but I do have fond memories of it. Next. Marlin Sidewinder. Yeah, no, this is one I don't have fond memories of. The uh, the Marlin Sidewinder. Awful guitar. This, for me, embodies and personifies all of my memories of cheap, nasty, entry-level guitars that were as liable to put you off playing the guitar as they were to encourage you. All of the things that we've been talking about throughout all of these guitars, high action, uh, poor tuning stability, 
and you know buzzy frets and sharp fret ends and just not a nice playing experience in in any way shape or form the uh, the, the locking trim on this um kind of cheap nasty super strap pile of plywood uh, was the uh, the kkt locking trim which locked up at the nut i think yeah, it had a locking nut but it didn't lock down at the bridge so that the tuning stability on this was absolutely just woefully bad probably the worst of the bunch out of all the guitars we've been talking about here today and for some reason a gullible british public uh, managed to make this the best selling electric guitar in the uk for two years running 87 and 88 how that happened is utterly beyond me so i've seen enough of it now there it's gone so there you go folks uh, those are my um my kind of list of candidates, if you like, for the, the worst guitars, uh, the worst beginner guitars that history has to offer. And to be honest, they're probably all best forgotten about, and I'm truly sorry for having reminded you of them, but it does make you grateful for the kind of entry-level guitars that we've got around these days. And that is pretty much the video for today, folks. Uh, if you have any thoughts or comments on these guitars that I've been um, reminiscing about, or if you think there's some candidates that should have been on the list that I've missed out, then leave a comment down below um, genuinely interested in hearing your thoughts on this but as I say that is the video for today folks hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and found it relatively entertaining and if that's the case please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not drop me a like while you're at it don't forget the live stream every Friday 5pm UK time we drink beer and talk about music and guitars great way to kick off the weekend got a real good community building up on there now and a friendly bunch of people I genuinely look forward to it every Friday it's a great way to kick off the weekend and i'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now